Hey guys, it's Megan, and in today's video, I'll be showing you a few art projects that you can make when you're bored. One of my favorite places to go when I have some free time is to my local Hobby Lobby. Thank you so much to Hobby Lobby for sponsoring today's video. I swear, I could probably spend a whole day in here just looking at all the cool stuff that they have. You guys don't even know, like, I come here all the time. And they have the best selection out of any craft store near me. I always know when I go to Hobby Lobby, I can always find what I need. Even if you don't have an idea for a specific project, I promise you'll find something. You can find all the supplies that I used in this video at your local Hobby Lobby. The first project that I made this week was this disco ball painting. I used a 10 inch round canvas for this, but you could use just about any surface. You could draw a circle on a traditionally shaped canvas and do it that way, or you could even cut a circle out of cardboard. I also used this set of 48 acrylic paints. I always say, if you're just starting out with painting, I definitely recommend getting a large set like this so that you have a lot of color options. I used this set of paint brushes too, specifically this rectangle brush, this larger brush, and a small detail brush. First find a reference image that you want to use. I found this one on Canva. Next, cover your canvas with a base layer of paint. You can use pretty much any color that you want for this because it mostly gets covered up anyways. I ended up mixing some white and light magenta paint directly on the canvas. After that dried, I looked at my reference photo and started to block out the shadows on the disco ball. Again, the colors that you use are really up to you. We're not going for an exact replica of the reference photo, so don't worry if the colors aren't like exactly right. This will just help you to figure out where to put the tiles later. I know it kind of looks like a mess right now, but just stick with me. This is kind of one of those trust the process type deals. After that layer dried, I used a detail brush and some yellow paint to sketch out the general direction that I wanted the tiles to go. Again, I keep saying this, but the color is really up to you. Just make sure that it's something that contrasts with your background colors so that you can see it. I'd recommend starting at the bottom of your disco ball and working your way out towards the top. Not gonna lie, I did not count how many rows that there were. Really, the most important thing is getting this bottom part right. Because once you have that, you can kind of just work your way out from there. You can sketch out the individual tiles if you really want to, but I only sketched out the first few rows from the bottom, since they get pretty predictable once you get to about here. Now we can start painting the tiles. I used a flat brush for this. Again, I definitely used the reference photo as more of a suggestion, and I did not match the colors exactly because frankly, I really hate mixing paint. So I started with a dark purple, and I was basically like, okay, so here's the darker part of the disco ball. We're gonna put a darker color here. And same thing with the lighter areas. The color and the number of tiles does not really matter that much. You're basically just trying to replicate the values from your reference photo. So in the end, it should hopefully look somewhat three-dimensional. We'll see, fingers crossed. Definitely don't be afraid to use a whole bunch of different colors or even different shades of the same color. Here's what my canvas looked like when I was done. This can definitely be a time-consuming process, which is good if you have some time to fill, but personally, I can only sit here for so long. So if you need like a good stopping point, this would be it. So go get up, stretch, get a drink, so you can come back and look at it with fresh eyes for the next step. Okay, so now we wanna give our disco ball a little bit more dimension, and we're gonna do this by adding grout lines. If you look at your reference photo, you might notice that the grout is a slightly different color depending on where it is on the disco ball. Honestly, mine wasn't like a huge difference, so I may have taken some artistic license with this step, but basically, you're just gonna be painting in between the tiles. Generally, the grout lines will be lighter than the tiles, so keep that in mind when you're choosing your colors. And just like before, we're not copying the number of tiles exactly or anything. The reference is really just to give you a general idea of where the colors should go. After all the grout lines were filled in, I went back and painted over some of the tiles to help fill in any gaps and give the piece a little more dimension. I also used a small brush to add a few extra shadows and highlights to some of the tiles, but that's optional. And finally, I went back in and painted over the edge of my canvas with a light purple. So here's how my finished painting turned out. I feel like these look more complicated than they actually are. Don't get me wrong, it was sort of time consuming, but like it wasn't hard, you know? She's pretty cute, I like it. I kinda wanna see if I can get some LED strips to put on the back like I did for my headboard to make it light up. I think that that would look pretty cool. The next project that I made was this sunburst painting. For this project, I used an 11 by 14 inch canvas, some acrylic paint, modeling paste, and some palette knives. First, I found a bowl and traced it onto my canvas to make about half of a circle. Next, I used a palette knife to fill in the circle with modeling paste. If you don't have modeling paste, it's actually really easy to make your own. All you do is mix together 8 tablespoons of baking soda, 3 tablespoons of acrylic paint, and 2 tablespoons of Elmer's glue. You'll want this section to be fairly thick. Next, fill in the area around the circle with a super thin layer of modeling paste. You really don't need that much, this will just give you a nice base for the rays of the sun to stick to later. I took a little bit of modeling paste added it to a plastic bag, 
and cut off the tip to create a makeshift piping bag. I used this to create a line going the whole way around the edge of the circle. To make the rays of the sun, I added a tiny bit of acrylic paint to some modeling paste to create different colors. I was trying to go for like a more pastel vibe, so I really did not need that much paint, but you can use more if you want the colors to be more vibrant. I ended up making five colors all together. Next, I started to add strokes of each color with a palette knife. I started out using a palette knife that had a round head, but as I worked my way up, I switched to a pointier one. Honestly, I didn't really know what I was doing, as with most things in my life, so I kind of just went for it. It's a good idea to keep your colored modeling paste in sealable containers in case you make too much, which I definitely did. I was afraid that like I wouldn't have enough, but I ended up making a ton more than I needed, so comment down below if you have any suggestions of how I can use the rest of this modeling paste. I ended up using a paper towel to wipe off my palette knife as I was switching in between each color. Modeling paste sort of reminds me of frosting. Oh my gosh, you know what you could do? You could decorate a canvas to look like a birthday cake. I feel like that would look so cool. After I got over the curve, I switched back to my rounder palette knife. I let everything dry, and here's how my finished canvas turned out. I feel like this would be a good, like, layering piece. I could totally see this, like, sitting on a shelf with maybe, like, a figurine or a smaller painting sitting in front of it. The last project that I made this week was this rhinestone butterfly canvas. For this project, I used a 5x7 canvas, acrylic paint, paintbrushes, some rhinestones, and some glue. The first step is to paint the background. I covered my canvas with a light purple paint. Then I painted a few clouds. I actually made a video on this a couple years ago. This is just how I do it. I like to paint my clouds in four layers, starting with the darkest color first and working my way up to white. For the base of my clouds, I started with a mixture of violet, cool gray, and a tiny bit of white. You'll want to use a dry brush and make your clouds flatter at the bottom and more like puffy towards the top. Here's what your canvas should look like so far. For the second layer, I mix the same three colors together, but this time I added a little bit more white. Go over the base of your cloud, concentrating this color more towards the top, making sure to leave a little bit of the base color showing at the bottom to create a shadow. And when you're done, here's what it should look like. For the third layer, I just mixed some more white with the color that we mixed for the second layer. This will be focused mainly at the top of the cloud. You can also add like puffs of this color towards the bottom to give your clouds a little bit more dimension. And here's what the third layer looked like. And last, use some pure white to add highlights. Try to think about where the sun's coming from and go from there. I like to use my finger to blend it in. I added a rainbow by mixing these five colors with some white. I also watered down the paint a little bit so that the rainbow would be sort of transparent. Once that dried, I sketched out a butterfly with a white chalk pencil. This was sort of inspired by those rhinestone butterfly tattoos that were popular in the early 2000s. Have you guys ever seen the Click movie? If not, you should watch it, it's iconic, but in this movie, one of the girls is wearing one of these and the main character Claire goes up to her and she's like, is that real? And the other girl's just like, bestie, I got this at CVS. Like, what are you on? Is that even an option? Like, can you get rhinestones embedded permanently in your skin? I don't know, I never looked into it. But once I had everything sketched out, I started adding the rhinestones. Okay, so have you ever seen those nail videos where they have those like pencils that they use to pick up the rhinestones? Well, I didn't have one of those. So what I did was I wrapped a little bit of blue tack around the end of a pencil to use instead. This actually worked surprisingly well. I ended up adding glue to a small section of the butterfly at a time and using my pencil to apply the rhinestones. I always love making mixed media pieces like this where you can use something other than paint to decorate your canvas. And you're not limited to just rhinestones either. There's a lot you can do with things like sequins, confetti, beads. I think beads would work really well for something like this where you're creating an outline. Or you could use different colors of beads to sort of color in an image. You could also glue letter beads to your canvas to spell out words. I think that that could look cool. Or you could do something with shaped beads like the smiley face beads or star beads. I also like using glitter to add details. This is sort of like those diamond paintings, except for this was way faster. Have you ever done one of those? Personally, I haven't. Frankly, I do not have the time or the patience for that, but my sisters made a few of them. I wasn't loving how the wings looked. I thought the top ones needed to be a little bigger. So I sort of expanded them by drawing another line and adding some more rhinestones. And after all that, here's how my finished canvas turned out. I'm obsessed with this. I love how sparkly it is. But now I have a crap ton of rhinestones. So comment down below if you have any ideas for what I should do with the rest of them. So that was everything for this video. Make sure to let me know which art project was your favorite. I think mine was the disco ball canvas. I've been wanting to try that for so long and it actually turned out better than I expected. Again, thank you so much to Hobby Lobby for sponsoring this video. You can find all the supplies that I used in this video at your local Hobby Lobby. I'll put a link to them in the description. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys later. Bye!